Rose, a quick one. Top four uh, right now in the Premier League. Eight games gone as well. Sample size. Eight is a good sample size. Uh, Spurs, Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool. Will that be the top four at the end of the season? Yes, I think it probably will. Not so you're in the order. you discounting Newcastle. You're discounting Brighton. Yes, potentially Man United. Chelsea, obviously, discounting. Yes, I you don't think Newcastle may top four? No, I don't think they will. I think ultimately it's going to go to the fifth place in the in the Premier League because of the coefficient. And when yeah. it goes to the fifth, I think it possibly be Newcastle. Okay. But I also think that there are clubs such as Villa who deserve a mention here who will really be eyeing it up. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. Um, of those top four, um, look, Man City are still big favourites to win the league. They are. They're odds mm. on to still win it regardless of the result the weekend. Um, is it Arsenal? Have you seen enough from Arsenal so far this season then to think, OK, they're going to be the second team to push them? Well, I think Arsenal are going to win the league, Ed. So, so I think that, yes, Arsenal will push City all the way and ultimately eclipse them at the end. That's incredible. Yeah, I, th- I think they will. I think they've been building for for a long time under Arteta now. I think it's coming to fruition. The statement victory against City is is symbolic for what they're trying to achieve. Mm. Also, let's remember that Manchester City, nobody's ever won four in a row for a reason. The reason why nobody has ever... I mean, think of the great teams over the years. Mm. The great Arsenal side, the great Manchester City time side, the great Jose Mourinho Chelsea side. Nobody could do four in a row. Three in a row is fairly, fairly rare. So four in a row has never been done. And the reason it's never been done is because it's basically impossible. And I think that ultimately City will fall at the final hurdle. Yeah. Of the teams that I think or, or that we believe could maybe make that push for top four, Newcastle, Villa, Brighton, is their biggest problem, unlike Spurs, the fact that they play in Europe and they don't have the big enough squads to be able to do that Wednesday, Saturday or Thursday, Sunday? Thing? No, not, not really, because I, I think if you're trying to win the league, I, I don't know the data on this, but I imagine that nobody has won the league whilst in the Europa League. Because the Europa League is an incredibly arduous competition. You play a lot of games. A Thursday, Sunday is is difficult terrain to navigate. And it's the far-flung places you're going as well. You go yeah. to these random... Co- yeah, yeah, it's difficult. It's, it's, it's a very difficult competition to juggle. So, so I don't think... I think trying to win the league with the Europa League distraction is difficult. But I think that you, the Europa League can actually be quite inspiring if you're trying to finish in the top four. Keeping your, your appetite wet for European football is... Is something that that is a is a good thing. Get- no, no, but yeah, but ultimately, if you don't have a big enough squad, you can't balance like no. like certain squad. Like Brighton, as much as we lord Brighton and what they've done in Deserby, you know, he's ticked all the boxes since he's gone there. They don't have enough on the bench. No, that but that's a Brighton issue. That's not about the competition. So the two times that Chelsea have won the Europa League in recent years, yeah. we finished third both times. Yeah, but Chelsea have massive squads. Yeah, I know, no, no, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So but- that's my thing. My question was, is Brighton's issue in not making top four because it Spurs could be Brighton have to play European football yeah. and they do. No, actually, I just I don't think it's I don't think that it's going to rob them of it, of enough points. I think the reason that they won't get there is because Tottenham are just better than them. It isn't. Bec- you think so? Yeah, you I think, think Tottenham to- are better than Brighton. Yeah, I think so. Particularly the first eleven. Hmm. Particularly this the first is, eleven. They've been they've been annoyingly thing. brilliant, is, haven't they? I think I think there is a conversation to be had about Tottenham's squad depth. Yeah. But I've been, I think they've been annoyingly lucky. They've they've had their moments of yeah, luck, they've but had their, they've had a lot of moments this season. But that's Sheffield that's United, also big moment, that's Liverpool, very complimentary to Tottenham, you know, to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, Tottenham yeah. Hotspur and, and refer to them lucky. as as lucky and finding a way and coming up with an answer to a problem and yeah. and snatching a victory from the jaws of defeat. That isn't Tottenham. That's yeah. the opposite. So, like that's what you associate with Tottenham is Spursism. Spursism is is all of the opposite of everything that we just spoken about. Yeah, towards the end of the season, Spursism kicks in the back end, and, of the and hopefully it still will. <laughs> And hopefully it no, still will. It will be what, what's what's changed my my perception of Tottenham is the result against Liverpool. Despite the fact that they were so lucky, Tottenham finding that luck isn't really the way that they do things. Mm. And equally, the fact that they didn't go to the Emirates and get battered. Yeah, that that doesn't really chime with me and who I think Tottenham are. Like their and, record and, and at that ground is pitiful. Result. I mean, to be a man down, I know people say it's Luton. But to be a man down in a game where everyone expects you to win, you've got to find something, dig deep. Yes. And it's your centre-back that gets the goal. I mean, you've... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. solved the problem. They had a problem. They were down to 10 men. It was a difficult away tie. They could have got a goal down and they found a way. They they solved a problem. Rather than creating more problems for themselves, they they answered it. So Tottenham are being very un-Tottenham-like, but there is always a chance. Remember, they're only ever a Rizla paper away from being Tottenham again. Yeah. And being a team that has won two League Cups since yeah, 1991. And, and that paper is an injury to Son or Madison. It's that. It's that, it's that injury, also, it? they, they also have they also have the minerals to implode. Like you know this this Ange ball and all that mm. doing very well, but managers will be working him out. Managers will be studying him. He he could be Agreed. a good enough manager to evolve. Agreed. He could keep moving. He could keep it's coming up with solutions. We don't, we don't know. What, and no one. Let's be honest. No one really watched the Scottish Premiership. It's all very new to us. What we and the, and the other thing is they it's it's 
often being a good manager, mm. you earn your money when things are going wrong. You earn your money when the chips are down. You know when they're singing Robbie Williams at you and you're pulling victories out of the bag constantly? It's a, it's a great time. He's got a Midas touch at the moment. But let's see what happens when they're without Pesuma, something else goes wrong, maybe they're robbed, they, they get robbed. These things, we're told that these things even out over the course of a season. Let's say that their luck against Liverpool comes back the other way. How do they cope? That's a good segue, actually, to my next manager I want to talk about and team, Eddie Howe. He's had that wobble early in the season, right? I mean, they've struggled in big games. Newcastle, Liverpool's obviously one that springs to mind. Brighton, they got beat down mm. in the Amex as well. And me and you were questioning whether or not Eddie Howe had the minerals, right? When the going gets tough to mm. find solutions. All of a sudden, AC Milan away, good point in Europe. PSG smashed them at home, mm. absolutely obliterated Sheffield United. And a good point, I think, on the road at the London Stadium against West Ham. Newcastle, top four? Like, why not Newcastle? They finished in the top four last season. I mean, season. I think, gone backwards, I, think they? they'll, I think they'll be fifth. The, mm. part, the part of the reason why, I think that they they have they have bigger things on their plate to worry about than top four. Okay. Like, there are, there are very few clubs where this is the case, sadly. Mm. I think it should be the case for every club, but I don't think every club approaches it like this. I think silverware should be the priority for every football team, but I don't think it is. I think it is, though, for Newcastle. I think Newcastle need a trophy more than they need another top four finish. And I think Eddie Howe could etch his name into Geordie folklore simply by winning a trophy. So I think that they will really prioritise. Obviously, they've you know they've got the they've got to worry about the FA Cup. They will prioritise that. I think they're going to go a long way in Europe. Mm-hmm. I really do. I mean, I don't I don't think it's wild to see them finishing top of that group now. No, no, no. And what they did to you know like you've got to remember they were the they were the pot fours, mm. and they're going to finish top of the group. So they're going to go through. They're going to go a long way in that competition. Their home form will ensure their their route to, I think, at least a quarter final. But and then you for them, it's for them, it's it silverware. Has silverware. It has to be silverware. Yeah. I think for them, it just has to be silverware. So look, I think they'll finish fifth. But I think that they're going to they're going to fight a war on multiple fronts this year. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to go a long way in Europe. Cup, so they they're going to go a long way in Europe. They're going to be desperate to win domestic silverware wherever they can find it, and therefore their league form may suffer a touch. What, what do they lack? I think, I think you said. Like before, me and you were discussing about them as you know their centre backs. You said I think they lack the centre back. He looked good, didn't he? He looked great. He looked great. He looked great. Yeah. He look, he look great. You've had a dig at him a few times, by the way. Lascelles. Yeah. I do know. It's funny you say that because uh, I was talking to Ollie Clink and yeah. he thinks that I have it in for Dan Byrne. You do for both of them. Yeah. You know, it's because Dan Byrne doesn't look like a left back, does he? Well, no, I don't think he's much of a centre half either, really. <laughs> I, I, I know you're not really allowed to say that because he's flavour of the month, but yeah. I don't particularly rate him highly either. And I, I think that ultimately, where Eddie, where Eddie Howe got it wrong was it's all very well to say that he hasn't got it wrong because it's all going swimmingly but if you watch Darwin Nunes against Dan Byrne oh man I was clearly onto something if you watch <laughs> yeah. if you watch Evan Fer- him a couple of times, yeah, yeah. if you watch Evan Ferguson score a hat trick against them you can see that there's an issue with centre half and I think Scher is is excellent you know there's there's no two ways around it but they didn't they you know they signed Lewis Hall or whatever they didn't sign another excellent centre half mm. which means any injuries to their two excellent centre halves they're relying on what Burn and Lascelles in the Champions League. Mm. Obviously, the drop off from from Botman to from from Botman to Lascelles is huge. Mm. From Shah to um, to Burn is huge. So I think that they could ultimately come up short because Lascelles pulled it out of the bag against Paris Saint Germain, no doubt. And, yeah. and I'm pleased for him. It was a great moment. And Dan Burn being on the score sheet, you know, the boy who's been. You know, he's playing at Darlington recently. Like it's amazing. It's an amazing story. But I just don't think he's as good as everyone else seems to think he is. No, he's not. Let's be honest. He's not. So top four remains top four. Top four remains top four with Newcastle making Champions League. I like it. Right, when we come back, Twitter corner. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.